This seemingly joyful scene took place in the provincial capital in southwestern China. But if you know what the song is about, you will feel sad for the young people who sing it with passion. The song's name is, Those Without Dreams Don't Get Sad. The song lyrics went like this, The temple that people worship only exists in the hearts of the ignorant. I live in the pig pen where I belong. This night is sleepless. I don't want to perish in failure and loneliness. I don't want to live underground all my life. The material deception is everywhere. We are ants in a hurry. People without culture don't get sad. Since when have young people in China lost their dreams? It's important to know that the upcoming May 4th is Youth Day in China. Last year, before Youth Day, Communist Party leader Xi Jinping encouraged young people in China to set big dreams and integrate their personal goals into the big picture of the Chinese nation and its people. He said, if the young generation has dreams, skills and responsibilities, the country will have a future and the nation will have hope. The party's top-level media said, At the critical period of the great rejuvenation of the Chinese nation, young people should establish solid goals and beliefs, shoulder the important responsibilities of the times, develop excellent skills, and play more vigorous music of youth. Yes, young people are generally the most energetic, but now too many young people in China feel that there is no hope, no future, and no prospects. We have done a series of episodes on young Chinese lying flat, it's the state of some at the moment. First of all, the lack of economic opportunities has made young Chinese frustrated. In recent years, the number of college graduates has increased dramatically, intensifying the pressure of competing for jobs. According to the official Chinese statistics, in 2022, the number of recent college graduates reached 10.76 million. A survey shows that as of November 2022, about 70% of college graduates hadn't found a job. Against the backdrop of university students facing unemployment upon graduation, the number of university graduates in 2023 is expected to reach a new record high of 11.58 million. Many highly educated young people have no choice but to engage in simple labor. For example, a master's degree student from Shenzhen University entered a factory as one of the workers who tightened screws. In the party propaganda, this is a happy experience. We just graduated after all. It's a transition from academics to working in the field. When I was in graduate school, I didn't have two days off. Neither did I have the experience of leaving work on time every day. I had to work overnight even at that time. In order to use the equipment for the lab, I sometimes had to work on Saturday or Sunday. When I came to this factory, I suddenly have two days off, and then I work till five and can leave work on the dot every day. I have more time for myself, and I can go play ball after and go home to spend time with my family on weekends. Overall, I feel that my sense of happiness in life has improved. Surely, not all young people need to boost their sense of happiness this way. 
On March 24, 2023, the topic of Retired Official's Granddaughter Claims to Have Nine Digits of Savings was trending on Weibo, a major social media platform in China. The incident occurred on March 22 when a girl posted on a social media platform, I've run. Run is an English word taken by the Chinese to mean leaving China and migrating overseas. Her IP indicated Australia. The girl said that her family had a savings of nine figures and it was all thanks to the leaks. Leaks refer to average Chinese people who like leaks can be harvested repeatedly. The girl's Weibo page also posted many photos of her father traveling overseas on official missions, as well as a group photo of a civil service training class in Shenzhen, and a photo of her father with the government's top officials years ago. Later, netizens uncovered that the grandfather of this girl was the director of the freight branch of Shenzhen Traffic Bureau and had registered a company with US 12 million back in 2003. This is present in China. For young people, what matters most isn't individual talents, but the family background, money, and contacts. The class difference is continuously growing. In the 80s and 90s, children of government officials, vegetable vendors, or successful entrepreneurs might still study in the same classroom. But after the year 2000, basically, people from different social classes rarely study together or share the same school. After graduation, their jobs will be drastically different because of their family backgrounds. All of this brings a great sense of frustration, making young people in the lower and middle classes more and more pessimistic. In the deteriorating economic environment, those who have worked hard before have lost to the bad times, not to mention the young people who have just graduated or haven't worked for too long. 我就把我说是研究生失业半年多呢，还没找到工作，投出去的简历百分之九十八点七五都石沉大海，也就是说每一百分。I am a graduate student from the University of Project 985, and I have been unemployed for more than half a year. Currently, I haven't found a job yet. Ninety-eight point seven five percent of the resumes I put out have gone unanswered. That is to say, for every hundred of them, there is one reply, and it's to let me know that I am unsuitable. You may have a high level of work experience and a graduate degree, but there is really no market for you after the age of 35. I did submit a very, very large number of resumes, and I actually took off my Kong Yi Ji's gown. Kong Yi Ji, or Confucius ABC, is another self-deprecating meme for young Chinese. I started delivering takeout before 2023. Recently, it's the off-season for takeout, and there are sometimes no orders for takeout at all. So on the Mei Tuan and Ulami online platforms, I have to snatch orders manually. A few days ago, a media reporter came to interview me. He also witnessed that I couldn't snatch up any takeout orders. I was a senior reporter for the Southern Weekend, and I did put forward many resumes. Recently, I saw that my hometown, Qingchen Mountain, was hiring a Taoist monk. When I clicked in, I saw that no one over 35 years old was wanted. My major is actually quite relevant because I graduated in Chinese philosophy and studied Taoism. If you don't believe me, you can read my graduation thesis and academic credentials. This is my thesis and my master's degree. This is my graduation certificate. I am indeed a graduate of Chinese philosophy. Some people may think that I haven't lowered my stance, but it isn't true. Some websites are looking for new media editors, editors-in-chief and interns. I didn't apply for the editor-in-chief position. I applied for the intern position, but I didn't hear back. I didn't get the job. That's the reality. It's not surprising that this master's student couldn't keep his takeout job. The spending power of the Chinese people is rapidly declining. Take a look, Beijing's delivery boys are going to lose their jobs. There are no orders. Leaders come and take a look. Young people who once thought their income would always grow have leveraged up to buy cars and houses, but they are now becoming the straw that breaks their back. It's snowing again in Beijing this afternoon, and it's quite heavy. The mood at the moment matches the current scenery. Just now, I was told to see my supervisor and have a talk. The talk was about the company wanting to optimize its staff, so I was laid off. 
I am speechless. I came to this company almost eight years ago. I joined with the idea of growing with the company. While I was here, the company went public three times, but I didn't get any shares or options. My good years have been spent in this company. I stayed for eight years. Now the company has laid off us old employees, and it's hard to take it in. Due to the epidemic in the past few years, the profitability of the company hasn't been good. There are also problems within the company, so I didn't apply for a raise in the past two to three years. Now that the epidemic restrictions have been lifted and things are looking up, but we get laid off. Living in Beijing is very stressful. I just recently bought a flat in Tianjin and got paid on February 15th. With a flat in Beijing and a flat in Tianjin, two mortgages plus insurance and credit cards, my salary wasn't enough to begin with. Now that I'm unemployed, how should I live the rest of my life? What to do after unemployment? There was always a way. Look, this young man has built a home under an overpass in Beijing. Come on, let's see where I live in Beijing. That's my bedroom, and this is where I cook. I got some furniture, three sets of sofas, and a Simmons mattress. China has never been short of people with dreams and the courage to work hard for them. This man was once a wealthy man who invested his entire fortune in the desert areas of northwest China, planting trees to combat desertification. He built his own canal to bring water for irrigation. The official Chinese media once praised him as a hero of fighting desertification. But now the hero is on his knees, begging for help. The local coal mine has destroyed the water supply, and the forest is suffering from water shortage and dying. The government officials are obviously on the side of the coal mine, which is rich and powerful. The daughter of the hero can't help her father. She published an online video for help. If we were not in a very difficult situation, we wouldn't be here to petition. Why? The situation we are in is really very difficult. We have 200,000 saplings, and if we convert them into cash, it's about 1 million yuan, or 146,000 U.S. dollars. Our family put U.S. 146,000 into the mountain to improve the condition of the desert. It is very difficult to plant trees in this desert. We are under constant threat every day. Every day, there are many people coming here to block us. We don't even know why. It's so hard. At a time when we believe that the so-called light can shine in every corner of the world, we find that there is no light. Under the sun, there is no light. Can you believe that? Look at this. Right up here, in the earliest days, there were sand hills as high as several dozen meters. It was like this. It was all yellow sand. Look. It's still bare. Shrubs like this, weeds like shrubs, were planted by my father with great effort. It has become like this, and it is still a bit barren. We hope to have such trees planted, because we see the hope of water this year. Last year, a teacher donated materials to start our water supply system. We are also working online in the hope that more knowledgeable people will participate in patching up the pieces of greens in our country. But we don't expect that there are still ignorant and uneducated people who block us from doing it. If it weren't so difficult, I wouldn't be telling you all of this. Her father has been going crazy for the past two days. My husband, you haven't seen him. He doesn't dare to appear. You have to see him. His face is so sad. Today he even kneeled down in front of the government. Compared to the encounter of the desert fighting hero, what the girl in the following has experienced is perhaps the first lesson that this unique society has taught her. 
I'm really, really angry. I've recently been defending my rights. An unscrupulous businessman violated my poultry right, and I have filed a court case against him. But today, the court administrator told me that the defendant couldn't be reached, so there is no way to verify. The defendant's identity is incorrupt because the personal information provided by the defendant to the online platform, including his phone number, is false. I couldn't reach him on the phone, and he didn't have the voicemail function on. I was told to reach the defendant myself by the court. I'm in Yichang City, Hubei Province. The defendant's ID card says Henan Province. I asked the court if I was allowed to access the police database to get the defendant's information. He said I would need a lawyer to do this. The amount of compensation in my case is about 2,000 yuan, and to hire a lawyer here. Charges start at least 3,500 yuan. I'm also a law student, and I want to take this case on my own. But I'm not a qualified lawyer at this moment, so I can't take this route. I can't access the police database to get the defendant's identity. I then asked the court, "Can you issue me an official document of assisted investigation so that I can take this official document to access the police database?" He said no, because such document is only for divorce cases. He said, "If you can't reach the defendant, there is no way to start this case." I asked him if it was possible to make a public announcement after the notice period has expired. Can we just hold the trial straight away? He said, "Yes, no problem, but you still have to make sure that the defendant's information is correct." You still have to reach the defendant to establish your court date. I've been anxious all day trying to figure out how to contact the defendant. Every legal way I could think of wouldn't work, except retrieving the information illegally. I have been wondering what is wrong with the world. I'm only a 22-year-old female student, and I have some legal expertise. If it's so hard for me to defend my rights, what about other people? What about other ordinary families, ordinary people? Not every case is so serious that you need to hire a lawyer. You know, I'm thinking if it's so hard for me to defend my rights. What about everyone else? The pleadings and evidence in my case were all provided by me, all of which I took on myself. From the beginning to now, I haven't been a tad scared, and I haven't had the slightest fear. But today, I feel very disappointed. I'm disappointed that these procedures are supposed to protect the legal rights of citizens. In the past three years, along with the epidemic in China, there were city lockdowns, forced quarantine at the Fengchang hospitals, and various social events that kept pushing the bottom line of people's conscience. Events such as the chained woman in Shuzhou, the bus accident in Guizhou, the fire in Urumqi, and other political and social events, which culminated to the outbreak of the white paper revolution, that is, using the sheet of blank paper to protest against city lockdowns. To this day, we can still see the influence of the white paper revolution in some small protests. Does such a protest work? It's hard to say. For those young people who still have a sense of social responsibility, they may gradually get used to depression. On February 13, 2023, in Guangdong Province, a migrant worker from Guizhou Province killed a factory manager and an agent due to unjustified wage deductions and coercions. Netizens refer to it as the 213 incident. A young man published a video about it, but was ordered to apologize in a public video by the police. 凌晨零点到一点之间，我在休息。I was sleeping between midnight and 1 a.m. when I heard someone knocking on the door. I got dressed and went to open the door. Suddenly, several police showed up and took me to the police station. I was told to make a statement about a video I published regarding the 213 incident. Then my cell phone was confiscated and I was locked up for the night. The police ordered me to make a confession video and asked me to talk about the Changyang 213 incident. I know I have done wrong. I learned my lesson. I won't publish any false or untrue content. The police said that the video I saw online was fake. 
don't spread it for the sake of gaining traffic. Only the content published by the police, the information and what you see for yourself is real content. After seeing all of these, do you find yourself sympathetic to this group of young people? They sing loudly that they are people without dreams and they are no longer sad about it.